When I was down in Mississippi years ago, I was arrested by those kinds of people for preaching the gospel in black high schools, and I was put in jail, and they took all my money away. Catch that. You hear John MacArthur say, they took all of his money away. And that, my friends, is why Esau was not fit to teach. The oracles of God was never committed to Esau. Okay, and this is why many are being led astray to this day. Even the so-called black men who are false prophets have learned all of this craftiness from the so-called white man. Okay, and it stems all the way back to the transatlantic slave trade because obviously black people couldn't teach their people the truth because the, the white slave master was there to supervise him and make sure that the service went according to his will. You see what I'm saying? So anytime you hear someone talk about persecution that they faced on behalf of black people, this, this is what John MacArthur was saying in response to someone in the audience, a young black man who asked him about uh, something about George Floyd or some, some in regards to black people suffering persecution, getting killed by cops. And this was what John MacArthur's response was. He, he said something of the likes of, I was there with Megger Evers and Dr. King. And, you know, I, I, I got arrested is what he said. I got arrested for helping black people. And they, when they arrested me, they took all of my money away. I mean, just, li just, just listen to that. Listen to the folly. Okay. He just don't get it. Okay. That's his definition of what persecution is. And yet this is the same guy who said he doesn't believe in white guilt. He doesn't believe in reparations. He don't believe in white privilege. He doesn't believe that he should have to pay a debt that was passed down to him from his forefathers. He believes and living freely off of blood money. You see what I'm saying? He's not teaching, even according to the scriptures, not just doing the right thing, but what the Bible says, the sin must be passed down. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There must be recompense. Okay. Man cannot outlive his sins. This is why the sin must be passed down. Okay, but nevertheless, the book of Genesis chapter 27 describes two different blessings that Jacob and Esau would receive. The blessing Jacob received was spiritual, which was the birthright. Okay, the covenant of Abraham and Isaac was passed down to Jacob. And from Jacob, we got the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Okay, so the 12 tribes of Israel is where you get the law of Moses, a covenant that was established between God and his chosen people, the Semitic people. Okay, one of those 12 tribes was the lineage of Judah. And of course, that's the lineage of which Christ was birthed from. Okay, where was Esau during all of this? Okay, as I've stated, Esau has a 4,000 year faith deficit. Okay, Esau was not introduced to the new covenant of Christ, which is you must be born again. Okay, that's the only way that the Gentiles can be saved. Is through being born again. Now, of course, everyone must be born again, but those of us who descended from Moses and Abraham and our forefathers, there was a time where they could come into the kingdom. Now, we know this because Christ described Abraham with Lazarus. They were in paradise. You see what I'm saying? God commanded the children of Israel not to marry with the Canaanites because they had corrupted bloodlines. 
Okay. And they had no covenant with God. Now, all men's blood was corrupt because of the transgression of the fallen angels. The fallen angels made it with the daughters of men. And that's how the corruption of man's blood was initiated. But God being a God of faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. God made a covenant with Abraham and changed his name from Abraham to Abraham because Abraham was obedient to God. When we get down to Esau, Esau, of course, sold his birthright for a morsel of food. Now, how do we know that this relates to the so-called white people today, the Edomites? Esau's the father of the Edomites because they're more concerned about tangibles and measurements, okay? <laughs> they're, they're more concerned about money, about wealth about taking over land, going and conquering things, uh, making people a debt slave unto them. You see what I'm saying? Esau was more fleshly, more carnal. Okay, so there were two different blessings. Esau's blessing was the fatness of the land and that he will live by the sword. Okay, he will live in the duel above, talking about the mountains. Okay, Edomites, they're, they're they're a mountainous people, okay? Black people don't live in the mountains. By Esau having a 4,000-year faith deficit, that was a bloodline curse, okay? If you fast forward to this day, that curse is still manifested to this day. How do we know that? Because they don't like to talk about Esau. John MacArthur doesn't talk about Esau. They just say, well, all of that was in the Old Testament. Understand something. The whole purpose of genealogies is for you to do your due diligence and go and search who those people are because the scriptures speak of these people because these people are still existing to this day. There's nothing new under the sun. There weren't just all of a sudden this new race of people then you have this industrial revolution. And now black people and white people are just all of a sudden brand new people. No, 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 no. This goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. When God created Adam, he said that it's good. Everything he created was good. And man was taken from the dust of the earth. You see what I'm saying? Man being taken from the dust of the earth was a dark brown man because that's what the soil of the earth looks like. It's common sense. You see what I'm saying? Everything was good. This, that's what Genesis, the book of Genesis starts out with. Everything God created was good. What happened? Okay. The reason why the Gentiles lost their skin pigmentation, they lost their melanin, is because of sin. Sin corrupted the bloodlines. Again, the fallen angels corrupted the bloodlines, initiating the curse of leprosy, which turned the skin complexion, not only the skin complexion, but the pigmentation, the texture of the skin, the, the bone density, the eye color, everything changed. Sin corrupted the bloodlines. That's why in the book of Leviticus, God told the Levitical priesthood of Aaron and Moses, uh, what he said, I want you guys to observe these people as they come in and out of the camp. If they have leprosy, which is bright spots on the skin, or yellow hair rooted in the skin, they can't come into the camp because they're unclean. So it was not only a spiritual blessing that Jacob, the, really the blessing Jacob and his descendants received was that they were going to be in fellowship with God. They were going to be over the tabernacle of God, but they were going to have this high priest responsibility of keeping the covenant. This is why Aaron's sons got drunk. They were priests and they got drunk and they had to pay the penalty, which was death because they came into the tabernacle 
and they were not pure. They were not holy before God. You got to understand the children of Israel were in the presence of God. That was the reward. That, that was Jacob's blessing. Okay. So I done explained Jacob's blessing, Esau's blessing, the fatness of the land. So this day, now where it gets tricky is once Esau starts building seminary schools and churches and cathedrals, and he starts dressing things up to make it appear as though he's God's chosen people. But Esau was never fit to teach. He was never fit to teach because the oracles of God was never committed to him. This is why God said, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Why did he say he hates Esau? Because Esau, by him living by the sword, was going to do the abominable, unlike any other human species in the earth's history. You understand what I'm saying? Esau was going to rape, murder, uh, be homosexual, be pedophile, do the abominable, profane. Okay, the the, the 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 New Testament describes him as a profane person. I believe in the Book of Hebrews or Romans, one of the two. Okay, this is why God said He hates Esau, because in Esau's reign over the earth, He was going to do so many different things to bring more and more demons into the earth. He'll do anything. He'll bring feminism. He'll bring LGBTQ. He'll bring uh, war and famine and all sorts of diseases. That's why God said he hates Esau. So when you get guys like John MacArthur who are uh, imposters, okay, they put on a three-piece suit and they come before you and tell you that their persecution is that his money was taken away. Think about that. Now, he's talking about in the 1960s. You got black people getting dogs sicked on them, and they're getting holes down, and they're going through all of this segregation. They're getting spat on. Uh, black people getting castrated and lynched. And he's talking about they took all of my money away. You ignorant devil. <laughs> Look at the, the Satan has the ability to appear as an angel of light. This guy sit up here with a three piece suit on and tell you they took all of my money away. And even that's a lie. You can't take away his grandfather's wealth. <laughs> He's talking about the little petty cash that he had on his person. D John, you're a liar. You're a liar. And you need to repent because you're right now, all the wealth that you have is blood money. That church that you guys built is on blood money. The book of Romans chapter three, verse two says that it's an advantage to the Hebrews that the oracles of God were committed to the Jews. This is why it's so important to be the Semitic people. Because again, the oracles of God is the spiritual blessing. The scriptures state that he reveals his word to Jacob and he has not dealt with any other nation as he's dealt with Jacob. It's the scriptures say in a book of the Apocrypha that all the other nations are as spittle. Okay, just read your Bible. And this is not to, again, this is not to say that one people is better. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that if we're going to talk about this salvation thing, we have to talk about carrying your weight of the gospel. Because this whole Jacob and Esau, two different blessings, by the time Christ comes and shed his blood for our sins, and he gives us the keys to the kingdom, the go ye into all the world, preaching the gospel so that the Gentiles may be saved. Okay, because there are far more Gentiles than there are Hebrews. You see what I'm saying? And Christ said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Speaking about eternal life. In order for Esau, since Esau 
has a 4,000 year faith deficit in order for him to be effective in preaching the good news of Christ Jesus, the new covenant of being born again, Esau is going to have to use his blessing to do that. You see what I'm saying? This is where we get to why Christ, why Christ said to the rich young ruler it, it, that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. Because yes, on the surface level, yes, th there's something called common grace, but then there's saving grace. There's a difference between the two. This is why this prosperity gospel is so dangerous because they're teaching common grace. Okay. A drug dealer has common grace. So money is not the blessing. The scriptures say the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. This is what Esau did in perpetuating slavery, even to this day. His love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, homosexuality was included in that, but I don't have time to get into that. So the blessing of Esau, living in the fatness of the land, God gave him that common grace so that he will have something to contribute to carry his weight of the gospel. You see what I'm saying? So that that 4,000 year faith deficit is now a weight of the gospel that's been lifted. Because let's be real, <laughs> although we're talking about spiritual things, salvation in Christ Jesus, being born again, ministering your earthly things will contribute to someone's belief. Seeing that you are serious, they will take you serious, you cutting them a check. You see what I'm saying? God in his infinite wisdom knew this, that, and that's at the core of why he said, go sell everything you own and give it to the poor. God wasn't just testing him. No, he knew, again, and also James chapter 5 says that the riches are corrupted. <laughs> so the scriptures say, if the thief be found, he must restore sevenfold what he has stolen. Okay, this is why uh, Zacchaeus. The rich tax collector gave back fourfold what he had stolen, and he gave away half his goods as well. Okay, so he actually gave back more than what he had received. You see what I'm saying? First Peter chapter 4, verse 11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Let him do it as the ability which God giveth. Again, God gave Jacob a blessing, and he gave Esau a blessing. Esau can't speak from spiritual roots. Spirituality is not in his bloodline. He's all about tangibles and measurements. Now, this doesn't mean that if a man becomes born again, that he can't be spiritual at all. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying a higher, he has a higher concentration of carnality in his bloodline. You got to keep in mind that he spent 4,000 years away from God. That's an outstanding faith deficit. And also, in addition to that, again, the fallen angel blood, Esau has a higher concentration of fallen angel blood in his DNA. This is why he doesn't look how Adam looked when God created him and said, everything I made is good. Sin corrupted. The sin is incredibly expensive. You see what I'm saying? So God gave Esau his gift as a wealth doll so that he can carry his weight of the gospel. But this ain't what we see going on today. We see we see these Caucasians living in these in these cul-de-sacs, living in these high rises, living in the comfort of the land. This is why God said you can't serve God and mammon. You either gonna hate you, you can't serve two masters. You're either going to hate one and love the other, okay? Because he said, what if the good man of the house had known when the master was coming, he would have had his house in order. You see what I'm saying? God, in so many words, is saying, you're going to hate me when I come to destroy all of your things. Because it's, 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 it's all for blood money. 
It's off of innocent bloodshed. You see what I'm saying? So you got these false prophets like John MacArthur who are saying these things and they're going unchecked. Their own people don't check them because he looks like them. You see the folly of racism, how that can lead to many going to the lake of fire for all eternity. That's why Christ said, what good is a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? He's not talking for the most part. He's not talking. Mostly to black people, because black people, most of our people don't have the world. The scriptures say Judah is mourning. The sacrifices of God is a broken and contrite spirit. Okay, you can't have a broken and contrite spirit with folly. Okay, let's just call it what it is. Okay, this is the blessing that Esau was given. All right, he has a 4,000 year faith deficit. He fraudulently Use the word of God to institute slavery. That's what he used the Bible for. That's why your people got to tread cautiously when you're trying to teach. Because word has gotten out that you use the Bible as a fraud. You, 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 you empowered the Pope to start these different sects of Christianity, uh, uh, purgatory, and all of these false doctrines. You see what I'm saying? You've instituted slavery. You've profited off of seminary schools. I'm saying all of this because in carrying your weight of the gospel, this is how you're actually going to be a benefit to the body of Christ. Okay. <laughs> the body of Christ in the book of Acts, those Gentiles, because faith was not in their bloodline. Okay. So what did they do? They went and took their wealth, all of their possessions, and they laid it at the apostles' feet because it was the apostles who were the ones doing the miracles because that's the blessing that's given to them. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But I'm going to do more videos on this subject, okay? I just wanted to break down why Esau is not fit to teach. You got to look at the faith deficit, okay? You have to look that a man outliving his sins is not an option. The sin has to pass down. And sometimes when a generational curse passes down, a person's faith will be compromised. The, the scriptures also talk about strong delusion and the deceitfulness of riches. Okay. <laughs> Those are, that's what I call faith deficit. Okay. But the sacrifices of God, a broken and contrite spirit, you have a broken and contrite spirit. You've been through slavery. You've been castrated. You've been hosed down. You've gone through segregation. You've gone through child support, prison, industrial complex. You've gone through all of these curses, which were mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy 28. Okay, and those are the curses that came upon our people. But in going through those things, okay, our faith, going from faith to faith and glory to glory, the scriptures also say in Genesis 25, one nation will be stronger than the other. Because of what? Because of faith. Our people didn't have a faith deficit. All right, I hope you guys learned something today. Many of these false prophets ain't teaching this good word like I gave you today. <laughs> Remember, don't let your flesh write checks that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. God bless.